and uh, happy Sunday guys Steve Velocity's here and I just want to do a really quick video the uh, stationary workstation um, workbench is now done and uh, just wanted to show it to you actually it was a journey and uh, a really fun one too at that you can see I got a place for everything and I think it turned out pretty good I'm actually happier that I did the uh, the longer back because it gave me a lot more room and I had just enough room for everything and then still if you look up there I still have some room to grow for stuff that I don't use all the time so so let's give you a really quick tour the uh, big trade-off that I had was the uh, plywood storage in the back. I lost the ability to store some really long sheets, but yeah, if you can see here, hopefully you can see I can still get some some uh, some of my better plywood. I can store it up there. It sits nice and straight, which is cool. That's good. And then this section back here was perfect for my uh, my big old hundred foot extension cord and then my small shop extension cord here and uh, that turned out very very nice and then of course here you'll notice that I did do some white hooks because I've got my um, uh, my, my cordless drill charger here and you know it's going to get knocked off so this way it doesn't hit the ground so that's that keeps me from uh, destroying it and um, then we come along here and I'm able to turn the uh, the vise any direction so I can do it caddy corner or this way so in spite of this being longer right here I can still use that pretty effectively uh, I've got some storage down there for a bunch of miscellaneous screws and stuff and then of course the cream de la cream sorry I keep hitting the uh, the camera there and making a bumping noise but it worked out perfectly what I was able to do is I had a bunch of angle stock that was left over from when I did the 8x10 pallet shed and then I had bought a bunch of uh, brass screws an assortment from uh, Harbor Freight and so I was able to actually utilize that and some other bracket material my wife had picked up here just you know really flimsy stuff but it really helps you line up everything you know you can see I have a nice alignment on all my tools and what's really cool about this is it honestly feels like an engineering workstation when I step up to this workbench I feel like I'm on the Starship Enterprise and uh, it's just really cool I feel like creating stuff when I come over here everything is at my fingertips and um, I'm just really really happy with it I guess the highlight is that I did you know I talked yesterday about the uh, French cleats and I was able to actually do something similar to that uh, I did some um, pseudo pocket holes on a 2x4 and then I went ahead and this is what was really cool I had some chisels and so I used uh, my drills and drilled out some holes and then what was really cool is I don't get an opportunity to use my files very often but I was actually able to use some of the wood rasps which is really cool and then um, the circular the, the the round fine file and I was actually able to produce some really really cool um, slots for these chisels which is pretty cool I did all that by hand which was awesome um, I like using the files I think many people don't realize that when it comes to files and uh, you can do a lot with them with woodworking and then of course I've got this is a tool this is my sure form tool that I haven't really had a chance to use it yet but you can take a lot of wood down let's say you're working on a handle or or something like on my uh, let's come over here real quick on my pallet ripper and I wanted to make this circular I could take this rasp and take that down I could actually make this round just from using this and my files over there 
and it would come out soft, almost, almost is um, actually in some respects, depending on the quality of the files you use, you know, some of them are $150 a pop, which I'm not going to buy, but you can get some really, really good, um, better than sandpaper smoothness. I don't think anything is going to get better than a hand plane though, you know, but I guess somebody could argue me, with me on that and they'd probably be right. So the second thing that I did <clears throat> is I had this, this, these stock right here. This was the actual trim, uh, the, the cutoff that had come off the bench right here, the top, whenever I uh, uh, ripped these down to make them square. Uh, anyway, I have this stuff. I decided to keep it, and lo and behold, I'm using my, my uh, metal stock here, and I decided to take a couple pieces like this and then just screw them and attach them right here, top to bottom, so that the uh, the brass screw is screwed into the bottom. So then I drilled some holes, and I've got a nice place for some really cool tools. Uh, hopefully you can see this. This was a garage sale or a Goodwill find a while back. I've never seen anything like it, but it is a quality punch. I mean, I can... You know, people, you know how they make those awls or, you know, you see people scribing holes where they want to drill. This sucker, it almost looks antique. I, I have to do some research on it, but I really like it. Um, and I was able to actually plot out these holes and kind of punch it before I drilled it. And I uh, got another one there. These are really good for the pallets. I pop out the old nails with that. So this stuff is pretty much stuff that I use all the time. Um, got my easy out set right here. Anyway, as you can see, I have put the tools that I use most frequently in my uh, hobbies and woodworking. And I'm going to probably have some OCD about having all this stuff straight for a while because I'm still geeking out. Um, but it's all where it needs to be. I got these. This is what I use to rip the pallets down with. Um, they just fit right nicely in there. All of this stuff is what I use to, to uh, denail the pallets. Um, it's just cool. And I'm really sorry. I keep hitting this tripod. I know from experience that every time I do that, it's going to go make a thumping sound. Um, and then the, I think the last highlight, because I want to make this video fairly short, is that I, I was concerned that this was going to look tacky up there because it's, you know, different. But I wanted something to be able to store all of my uh, clamps. And this thing's perfect. I could actually buy a whole bunch more clamps and just put them in there and they would just be lined up really, really pretty. And then you notice I got the saws under the clamps. If I ever buy any longer clamps, then what I'm going to end up doing is just moving those saws because that thing... Hey, I'm really sorry, guys. I was editing my video when I realized that it had actually cut off uh, right in the middle of my discourse on the clamp rack. And I just apologize. Um, I think eventually one of the purchases that I will make down the road is a camera which will allow me to play longer than nine minutes. Um, i got to do some research on that. So uh, real quick, just want to let you know that I'll, if I ever did have to buy any longer clamps, which, you know, every shop needs at least two, maybe three, that the best thing to do would be... Uh, for me just to, to buy three of them, take all those saws off the bottom right there, and then they'll just fit right in that rack. Um, also, I've been thinking about the video, and there was two points that I didn't remember to tell you guys about, and that was, if you look at this, and if you look at the wood there, right, both of these I did add-ons after I had done the boiled linseed oil um, and so I had just normal wood that had been untreated but I didn't really feel like going to the, the trouble of doing the linseed oil and uh, that kind of thing especially I wanted to put the tools in and just be done with this for today so what I did is I went ahead and used this lemon oil okay I've always known lemon oil is good 
Um, it's just that I don't think that it's, it lasts as long. You have to retreat it every so often. Um, however, I did want to do the comparison and it actually matches the uh, natural look of the wood that the uh, linseed oil brings out. Um, and of course, you see that was pretty light before I did the uh, the lemon the lemon oil. Um, this wood just loves lemon oil; it just soaks it right up. The only downside is if you have coated. Just show you this real quick here. Uh oh, there we go. Everything's a little tight. I meant for that to happen. <laughs> so anyway, you notice, see how dark this is now? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what happened is I got the lemon oil and it mixed in with the previous coat of the linseed oil. <coughs> Excuse me. And it went, it went pretty dark. So um, I don't know. I don't think that's going to lighten up whatsoever. But um, anyway, I'll put those back here in a second when I get my hands freed up. So just wanted to point out that real quick was that lemon oil is an alternative to use that's, um, that is uh, safe. I think safer than boiled linseed oil. So I do believe I, I've kind of worn this video out and shown you guys everything. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Oh, there is one more thing I wanted to show you. And this goes along the lines of reusing everything you can out of the palette. And these were the bottoms of the, uh, the skid that I had chopped up with the Sawzall um, that I got the backboard from. And even this can be used. Uh, if you need to do some painting, and you need to raise stuff up above and you don't you know you want to you don't want to do it on your workbench because uh, you could put cardboard down on your workbench and paint but these things are perfect for taking out on your driveway and um, they're already trashed anyway so if you needed to paint something just uh, spread the, that out the work over these and it makes a perfect platform as far as that goes so I'm gonna keep those around so uh, anyway I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching my videos and subscribe, like if you like, and have a creative week. I'll see you next weekend. Steve Velocity out.